AI is a hot topic right now for many organizations, but how exactly do you find an AI strategy and roadmap for your organization? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with digital transformations. And one of the things we do as independent advisors for organizations is to help them define how they're going to use AI and other emerging technologies within their organizations. However, it's not as simple as just picking an AI tool and hoping for the best. There's a very deliberate and structured process that can be used to define the best ways to leverage AI, not only in the short term, but also in the long term as well. So what I want to do today is share with you a framework for how you can take these simple steps to define what your roadmap is and define an AI strategy that makes the most sense for your organization based on your goals and objectives. Before we dive too far into today's content, I want to share a little bit of information about Third Stage Consulting and who we are. Third Stage Consulting Group is an independent technology agnostic provider of consulting services to help clients through their digital transformations. We help with digital strategy and software selection, as well as implementation planning, and during implementation, we provide services related to program management, organizational change, business process improvement, as well as enterprise architecture. These are just some of the services we provide. We have offices in North America, as well as Europe and Asia Pacific. So if you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to check out our resource center, which includes a number of resources that will help you through your digital transformation. And you can access that for free using the QR code here or the links below. You can also reach out to me directly if you'd like to discuss your digital transformation and brainstorm ideas on how to improve where you're headed on your journey. Now let's jump back into today's content. The really cool thing about AI, and also the overwhelming thing about AI, is that there's a plethora, multitude of ways that you could be using AI. A lot of different use cases, a lot of emerging ways that you could be creatively looking to leverage artificial intelligence throughout your operations. And in that plethora of options comes a certain amount of complexity and confusion and overwhelming priorities. And so what we need to do is, first of all, define what our strategy and objectives are as an organization. Where do we think the highest value is going to come from by using AI? We could probably use AI throughout our entire organization and find hundreds or thousands of ways to use AI to make our businesses better. And maybe we will at some point in the future. But to start, you want to take sort of a phased incremental approach to figure out how can you start using AI now and how can you start to bake AI into your operations. And the best way to do that is to look at your overall corporate strategy, goals, and objectives and determine where AI has the most potential to add the most value in the least amount of time. The beauty with this approach, too, is that it doesn't necessarily mean you need to replace all of your systems and go through a massive digital transformation. The beauty of AI is that you can leverage pockets of technology to build on the systems and the data and the platforms that you've already built within your organization. Not to say that you may not eventually replace those current legacy systems, but AI can be used right now to make full use of some of those systems. So to get there, it makes the most sense to start by defining your strategy goals and objectives as an organization, and then define how AI can best support those strategy goals and objectives. And that's what I'll talk about next throughout this video. Once you've defined what your overall strategy, goals, and objectives are as an organization, and maybe you have some general ideas of how AI might help enable those strategy, goals, and objectives, now you start to look at your business processes within those areas where you might be able to provide the most value throughout your organization. For example, let's assume that you're having trouble with stockouts, inventory stockouts, and you're not able to fill customer orders as high as you'd like. AI could be a great way to provide better capabilities and better insights to help you better anticipate customer demand and better handle your inventory management. So if that's the case, in this example, you would want to define your current state business processes within the realm of inventory management and perhaps customer order management and define what the current state is and where the major pain points and inefficiencies are. Once you've done that, then you can start to define sort of a what if scenario. What if we had AI tools that, for example, would give us a more accurate demand forecast from customers? If we had AI that could do that, what would that mean for our inventory management? And what would that mean for our overall production schedule? Things of that nature. So you'd want to look at those business processes as they stand today, assess where the strengths or the weaknesses are, the efficiencies and inefficiencies are, and then start to think creatively about how could we possibly use AI tools to give us more improved business processes.
artificial intelligence is a relatively new technology. It's actually been around for a lot longer than many of us realize, but compared to ERP systems or other types of technologies, it's relatively new. It's just been really on the forefront of the mainstream just in the last few years. And as such, most of your employees are still probably unfamiliar with how AI can be used. So it's not enough to just simply put AI in the hands of your employees and assume that because they have AI tools, they're going to be able to improve the business processes themselves or do their jobs better themselves. Instead, what you have to do is paint a picture and define how people's jobs are going to look in this post-AI environment that we're deploying. So in the example before where I was talking about better anticipating customer demand using AI tools, now that we've defined where the processes are broken and where they could be more efficient, now we need to define how that affects different people within the organization and how different people within those specific processes are going to use AI in the future to make their jobs more effective and more efficient. So if I'm a customer service rep and I take orders from customers, there's probably certain things that I can start doing to use AI to make my job more efficient, but I need to be shown how AI will make my job more efficient. So there's a lot of planning and design that needs to happen up front before we roll out these tool sets to employees to ensure that we've designed their roles and their jobs and their job descriptions to take better advantage of these tools. By doing that, we're gonna ensure that when we do roll out this new technology, people are actually gonna use it and it's not just gonna be a pipe dream of AI enabled processes, it's actually gonna be something that we're showing how people are gonna use that in their day-to-day -day jobs. Just as is the case with any sort of technology, you don't wanna deploy technology just to deploy new technology. You wanna do it because it delivers measurable business value. And that's the way you're actually gonna get the business value out of your technology investments is if you actually measure it. So when we're deploying AI, we wanna look at ways that we can define what the performance measures are today for how we're performing and what they should be for the future, what our target is for the future so that we can actually measure the value and look to see how AI is actually helping our business. In the example of inventory accuracy that I talked about earlier in this video, we might say that we're gonna start measuring the variance in projected customer demand versus actual customer demand, or projected inventory levels versus actual inventory levels, order fulfillment rates. You know, how are they improving as a result of AI? And then that's gonna allow us to continuously improve so that we're constantly adding new ways and optimizing the way we do business and ensuring that we're taking full advantage of the power and the capabilities of artificial intelligence. So setting those performance measures and the targets that go along with that are something that's very important to do as part of your AI strategy and roadmap. Now, once you've done all the work that we've defined here today, you've defined the strategy and objectives of your organization and how AI might support that, you've defined your current future state processes, you've defined the organization, you've defined the performance measures, now we define what is the roadmap going forward? What's the best option for us to accomplish all the things that we've defined so far? And this is where we start to get into things like, are we going to deploy a new ERP system that has AI capabilities embedded with it? Are we going to deploy separate standalone AI systems that maybe integrate back to our legacy systems? Is there some sort of interim solution that will hold us over until we have better back office systems? Do we need to clean up our data to take full advantage of AI, which I would say the answer to that is probably yes for most of you. So those are the types of things we have to ask ourselves and we have to look at all the different paths we have to go forward. What are the different things that we can do to start leveraging AI? And the beauty of this, as I mentioned at the top of the video, is first of all, this is not just a one and done sort of proposition. AI is something that continues to evolve at a breakneck speed over time. So the way we see and use AI today is gonna to look very different than how we see and use it two, three, four, five years from now. So the beauty is it's not set in stone, we're just getting started on this AI journey. The other beauty is that we don't necessarily need to replace all of our systems. We don't need to go replace all of our ERP systems or all of our financial systems. We can start to leverage what we have, maybe clean up the data in those systems, but once we have good data, we can start using AI to really give us a sort of a better user interface and a better analytics tool to help us get better value out of the systems we already have. And maybe that's a good interim step until you do find that it's time to replace your systems. So these are just a few examples of options and paths you might consider, but regardless, you want to look at what your different options are, compare the cost benefit, the pros and cons, and the risks of each of those scenarios, and ultimately lay out and recommend the roadmap that makes the most sense for your organization. So I hope this has provided you some guidance and thoughts on how you could get started on your AI strategy and roadmap. If you'd like to learn more and you'd like to brainstorm ideas on how to get started in your AI journey, 
feel free to reach out to me. I've included my contact information below. You can click the link below or you can use the contact information on the screen in front of you to reach out. In addition, I also encourage you to check out our digital transformation report. It's an annual report we publish each year, provides a number of best practices and tips and lessons for organizations going through digital transformations, as well as independent software reviews and rankings. So that's something that might help you as well as you get started on your AI and technology roadmap going forward. You can read that by scanning the QR code in front of you or by clicking the links below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. Organizations are, nope, it's not, hold on.